Hey everyone, this is the Need to Know, and uh, today we're going to be talking about relays, ice cube relays. So um, the reason they're called ice cube relays is because they look like an ice cube. They're a see-through. Um, these are going to be used everywhere in uh, manufacturing plants. Uh, if you're an electrician or an engineer, you're definitely going to be using these and seeing these. Um, if you've never seen them before, then you're at the right spot because I'm going to show you exactly what to do and what they are and how they function. Um, <clears throat> so let's get it going. We um, I got several relays up here. Also got a timer just to show you that not only relays but other things can fit into these uh, contact blocks as well. They're basically sockets. So you have 11 pin relays and you may have an 8 pin. Uh, they also come in uh, different different uh, styles of slotted terminal type uh, connections instead of these pins. So uh, this isn't the only kind you're going to see. They're all going to be basically the same but uh, they could be different also so you just have to be aware that the differences aren't that much big of a deal so they all have um, they all have a little schematic on the side um, they all go into a certain block and you wire them up based on what you need based on their schematic so let me show you that here is a nice relay uh, manufacturer was nice enough to put the coil voltage on the coil that's very smart some of these not so lucky so 24 volts put 24 volts on the coil the contacts that are in <clears throat> the uh, ice cube relay will change state so from normally open to normally closed and vice versa you'll see a little diagram on here this one's actually got a LED to tell you hey I'm on I'm working so or not or it could be on and not working so you got to be careful when you're troubleshooting this stuff if you look on the diagram you have two negative connected to 10 in the middle symbol for a coil so 2 and 10 is your negative and positive uh, coils terminals so also you have pin one down here terminal one and it is going up and normally closed with pin four when you put apply power to the coil energize the coil that will change and pin one will disconnect from four and connect to three so it's normally closed with four but it will change state and be normally open and then also change state with three and close that's going to be true with all three sets of um, all three sets of contacts that are on here one two three then you got your coil at the bottom so um, I think it's eight nine and eleven and also five six and seven at the top six is your common coming in it changes from five and goes to seven when you apply voltage to the coil so it's a pretty easy concept it's not really any you know anything uh, nuclear about it so um, you've got different types though that one like I said had an LED this one however has um, a little force button which is cool too so if you look at the contact in there you can actually see it forcing so if you don't actually have voltage to the coil but you want to turn that on for some reason just push the button boom and you will uh, change the state of those contacts this one also has one very similar but they're all really neat in their own way I guess if you look at the construction how they're uh, how they're actually designed it's really neat to see the differences um, in them I definitely prefer these over any of them just because of the uh, construction and stuff <clears throat> but as far as the terminal blocks, when you plug your um, when you plug your relay into your terminal block, like so, you just follow the numbers on the terminal block based on the schematic. So they're all going to be the same. Two and ten, which is if it's look at the really small number, that's a ten. It's kind of rubbed off, and that's a two. So you got your A1 and A2, they were nice enough to mark it. And then they got these larger numbers, 
and they uh, they kind of go if you look at them you have 31 right here 32 and 34 now really tiny numbers beside them that's 9 8 and looks like 9, 8, and 11 right there yeah right there I'm sorry so um, <clears throat> that's gonna match up with there but I mean it's really easy if you just look at the larger numbers they put out for you 31, 32, and 30, 34 so 31 is gonna be normally closed with 32 that makes sense right beside it 31, 32 right so when you change the state of the coil 31 is going to uh, it's going to open with 32 and then close with 34. So it's going to kind of do this. So you got your common coming in at the bottom, and it's uh, initially sending out 32 power from that terminal. Then when you change the state of the coil, it actually switches. It turns off from here and puts the voltage out this side instead. So it's really nice if you uh, if you need to switch anything, motors or whatever you know anything you can think of you can do it with electricity so um this would just attach to the DIN rail inside the panel clip on boom um, usually they have a spring release or like this one is kinda, kinda like that piece of metals being used as a spring kinda <clears throat> other ones like this you get a screwdriver pull it down and uh, basically pulls it off of the uh, DIN rail so you can let uh, get it loose that's basically it. You're gonna um, also see timers, stuff like this. Other things can fit into these uh, these uh, contact blocks, but the majority of the time, you're only gonna see stuff like this. Um, I already wired a block up right here for you to see. So I'm gonna put. Twenty-four volt coil. Now I've got the wires already ran to A1 and A2 for the uh, twenty-four volts, but right now there's no voltage to them. This, however, uh, terminal eleven does have one hundred twenty uh, one hundred twenty volts right now. So, like I said, up here is twelve. So we're putting eleven, twelve. So we're putting one hundred twenty out right now to this light. I don't know if you can tell that it's on, but it is. This light's on. And when I do put coil to uh, voltage to the coil, it will change. This one will turn off. That light will turn off. And then power will be coming out of this wire on terminal 14 instead. So, which will turn on another light. So I'm going to show you that real quick. So I'm putting 24 volts to the coil and taking it away, 24, taking it away. If you look close, you can actually see it working. But one thing about this relay, if you look really close, this side's not working at all. This contact over here is not working. It should look like this. You can actually see those things actually, you know, mechanically separating and connecting with the uh, with the uh, lower pins. So that's basically it. You have your arm in there with the voltage on it, and it's going from lower to upper pins, and and vice versa if it's working. And these things are really neat um, because you can actually just look in here and see the way they're construction, constructed and you, know, you see the ma um, when you apply voltage to the coil it basically turns it into a magnet pulling it you know pulling uh, pulling the metal to it and changing the state of the contacts so um, let me get a close-up shot of that see the arms contacts and you just follow the arms back they're kind of soldered to that uh, pin right there and the wire comes down and goes to another pin. So it's pretty neat, uh, neat little things. And like I said, you're going to see them everywhere. So hopefully this video is going to help you um, as far as troubleshooting. And if you do run into one, you're not completely, completely lost. Um, but uh, 
hope you guys had fun and if um I hope I uh, hope to see you soon again thanks